Hello, uh, today we're going to talk about being resourceful while working on a computer. So invariably when you work on a computer you're going to run into some problems. Um, and this can take the form of not knowing how to do something in Windows or you get an error message or you're working on a project and you need you know um, images or different things for that project or you're trying to you know do something in a program and you don't know exactly where the menu option is so we're going to talk about being resourceful and that's the ability to solve your own problems when working on a computer so the first thing that we're going to talk about is let's say that I have my date is incorrect on my computer let's say or actually my time is incorrect on my computer and I click on it and I don't really get what to do from this point um, the first thing with being resourceful is just click around. You know that's that's how you learn to do things in a in a computer. Um, you're not really going to break anything, um, and if you do, you can generally just go back and change the settings. Windows will warn you if it's something serious. So in general, you can just go and click around. But let's say in this case we we don't know to even click on the time because obviously it says change date and time settings here. But let's say that we don't see that. Um, a good place to start when solving problems in Windows, really any problem, is to click on the Start menu, click Help and Support, and you'll notice the Help and Support windows opens right up, um, and it gives you this um, Find Answer Quickly here, uh, and it's a search box. So let's say that we want to change our time. So I put in Change Time, I click on the Search button, and we start to read our results. So change the display of times and dates, set clock, oh, there it is, number two. So I click on Set Clock. Okay, and the great thing about Windows Help and Support is it actually gives you links to open things right there. So it'll give you a link that will actually do something on your computer. So it says click to open date and time. Okay, click on date and time tab. I'm already there. Then click change date and time. Okay, then it gives us a lot of other things okay so it gives us a whole set of instructions on exactly how to change our date and time let's say it was only off by one hour I'm gonna go ahead and click OK my time wasn't actually off so I'm gonna change it back and then I'm gonna click OK and click OK again okay so that's Windows help and support um, that is to solve pretty much I mean really a lot of problems on Windows or you know if you don't know where to find something on Windows or you want to do something on Windows that is the first place to go. Um, now let's talk about uh, finding resources online. Okay so now this is a case where you are working on a project and you need an image to go into your project. Okay now there is a reason why people say Google it. Okay so um, it's because Google is so useful. That's why there is a term that says Google it. So, um, so let's say you know when I go to Google, I get this search bar up here, or this this bar of different applications Google offers. Of course, my regular search is just the web search right here. Okay, by clicking search, and then I can also click on images. Now, the very useful search doesn't come up right when I click images. So, say I'm looking for puppies. I want a puppies image. And more to the point, I want sleeping puppies. Okay, I click search. And isn't that awesome? Look at all the sleeping puppies. So um, now here is where we're going to get into a useful search. Now, we understand that we just can't use anything we find online. Okay, so part of being resourceful is understanding that, that I just can't go and take somebody's image and use it as my own and, and use it in something. Okay, so we really need to use this advanced search. So if I click on this little gear right here, I'm going to click on advanced search. And what's going to happen here is I'm going to have a lot of different options. Let me bring this over. Um, a lot of different options here. So I scroll down, and basically I can go through all words, these exact phrases. I can go and then narrows your search by. I can do size of image. Let's say I want a um, an image that is, you know, larger than 400 by 300 pixels. Okay. Let's say I want an aspect ratio. Aspect ratio. Let's say it's tall, or square, or wide, or panoramic. These are, you know, if you're holding your camera on end, that's tall. You know, taller than it is wide. Wide would be wider than it is tall. Okay, so I can set a lot of options. If I scroll down, the most important one to set here is usage rights. Okay, so usage rights. 
I can click on a type of license. Okay, so free to use or share, free to use or share even commercially, free to use or share or modify, free to use, share or modify even commercially. Okay, so if I'm working on something for a school, generally um, not filtered is the least restrictive, free to use and share or modify is or even commercially is the most restrictive. Okay, so let's let's click on the um, just the free to use or share or modify because that's the one I can use for uh, school. Uh, and then I click on the advanced search button. Okay, so now I, you notice that I get a very different set of, of images here. Okay, now these are images that people have shared. You know, it's okay for me to use these um, uh, in my project, but notice how few results I get. I only get 35 results for sleeping puppies. Okay, so let's go back. Let's say that we want um, free to use or share. And let's say that we don't care about the size of it, okay? So it doesn't have to be larger. We just change back the image size to any image size. And let's go back to advanced search. Okay, and now I have a couple of good, uh, of good images here. So uh, there I have a very cute sleeping puppy. Um, okay, and I can actually go down. A few other sleeping puppies here. Obviously, all the names for sleeping puppies don't actually mean puppies in them. Okay, let's say I want a lot of sleeping puppies. Okay, so let's click on this one. Okay, oops. Let me go back. Let's click on it. Let's see the full size image. Okay, now what I can do is I can. go back. I can actually write, oops, go back. Google image search can be a little bit, a little bit um, odd. So notice that what's happened here is that Flickr, this website, has noticed that they're being linked to by Google images and has made it a little bit difficult to, um, to get the actual image. Um, so we're going to view the size. Let's say we're going to do medium. Okay. And at this point, they give us a download link, download the medium 500 size of this photo. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this photo. And then I'm going to right click on notice in my download window on Firefox. I'm going to right click and do open containing folder. It gives me this image, and I'm actually going to put this on our desktop so it's easy to find. So I'm just going to drag it on over to our desktop. Okay, now I'm going to close my windows, close my download window. I'm going to minimize my uh, Firefox window. Okay, now remember we're going to rename the folder, so we or rename the file. So I click on it. I wait a second. I click it again, and now I'm going to name it Sleeping Puppies. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up a Word document, and let's say that I'm working on a project. Okay, and we're going to you know continue to talk about. So we were resourceful. We we found an image that was legal for us to use. We downloaded that image. We even to the point of having to figure out the Flickr website. Um, you know that might have taken a while, but we were resourceful. And being resourceful means uh, not giving up. You know it means finding a solution to your problem. So uh, let's go ahead and click open up Word. Okay, so now I want to put this um, image into my Word document. Now, in today's world of computing, the best thing to do is just to drag and drop a file in. And nine times out of ten, this works. So let's see if it works here. And lo and behold, it worked. Um, so let's say that um, it looks a little bit small, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to right click and we're going to, oh, sorry, I clicked on it. We're going to delete that. Let's say that I don't know how to, in, to insert an image, though. Here's another way of being resourceful. So, in addition to having um, the help in Windows, almost every program that you work with has its own set of help files. So let's go ahead and um, and take a look at Word's set of help files. And Word is a is a well developed program, so it's probably going to have great help system. So we click on this um, this little question mark up here. We can also click F1. Notice that when I highlight it, it gives me that F1 in in parentheses. So that's the quick key for help in most cases. Okay, so we have our Word help here, and uh, let's go ahead and just uh, type into this Word help. Um, uh, 
insert image. Okay, and we could search on that. Another another option is that I could read down here through uh, through the actual menuing system. So if you look down here, look it says pictures and clip art. So let's try that one. Let's click on that. It says topics, add and change delete shapes, insert a picture or clip art. Oop, there we go. Let's insert a picture or clip art. Okay, now it gives me this article on what to do with with a picture or clip art. Okay, so insert picture from a web page. Oh, that's interesting. Insert a picture from a file. So if I would have read this earlier, maybe I didn't even have to download it. Maybe it would have just downloaded it automatically. Okay, let's say insert picture from a file. Okay, click where you want to insert the picture in your document. Okay, so I click right there. I want it just right where it is. On the insert tab in the illustrations group, click picture. So I go to the insert tab. In the illustrations group, I click picture. Okay, then the number three says locate the picture I want to insert. So I click on desktop. Scroll down. Oop, there it is, sleeping puppies. And I click. Well, let's see what my instructions say. Ooh, double click. Okay, then it goes in to explain that it embeds the pictures in the document. That means that's usually what you want to do in this case. You want to embed the picture. Okay, now watch what I can do here. I hold down the shift key and drag the corner, and that's going to make my picture larger. Uh, I can do the same thing here. Okay, so I have my sleeping puppy's picture inserted into a Word document. Okay, so that is being resourceful as you're working on a computer. It means trying to solve your own problems. Now let's say, though, that I didn't want to use the Windows Help uh, file, or let's say I ran into a problem that was, di you know, w wasn't included in Windows Help because you will, you will find that, you know, if you're using Microsoft Word, maybe there isn't a, a help a topic for that. Okay, that's when you start to use the Google search. All right, so let's say that I wanted to find out how to uh, insert an image in. Microsoft Word. So I type that into my search box. I could also actually go to the Google site. So notice that it insert a, an image from Microsoft Word. Okay, and I get all of these results. Okay. Part of being resourceful on a computer is to accept that no problem you have is unique. And by that, I mean that every problem that you're having on a computer other people have had it, had the same problem, and they've put resources online to help with those problems. Okay, so let's say that um, you know all these would be great examples. So support Microsoft. Let's go to this one. It's a, it's on about.com. Notice that I know I noticed the site that's on. I realize that it's a um, reasonably uh, about.com is a legitimate site. Notice that also I noticed the date of these results. Okay, so I wouldn't go for a result that was from 2002, okay, because that would be, you know, it could be an earlier version of Microsoft Word. It wouldn't be the current version of Windows. Uh, so I want to make sure that the dates of the, the resources are, are reasonably recent, okay? That's a major thing. So noticing the date and noticing the, the website that it's from are two major things. So let's say I go to working with images in Microsoft Word. It doesn't have a date on it, but I'm assuming that it's going to be recent because it's such a common thing that people uh, search on. Okay, and notice that um, oops. Notice that we have an article here, working with images in Microsoft Word. Okay, and this is essentially a set of links. Okay, so notice that it gives me a lot of different um, options. Okay, as far as working with images, I click on the first one. Okay, and notice one click away now, I'm into working with images in Microsoft Word, and notice that it starts to give me a reference. Now, here is a great example of why the help feature in Microsoft Word is a bit better than searching online, because notice that this looks quite a bit different than the um, version of Word that I'm working with. It doesn't have the ribbon, the insert is a little bit different. The commands will be about the same, but the but the menuing system is definitely different. Okay, 
So that was kind of just following a link. Another great um, option for finding things online, I'm just clicking back to get back to my search. Another great option for finding things online is going into forums. So if you have a really complicated issue or it's an issue that not very many people deal with, often these issues will be answered in what are called forums. So um, let's, I'm just going to add the word forum. Now for this issue, that's a very common thing people want to know how to do. Okay, so <clears throat> let's say that I want to learn inserting an image in Microsoft Word and I want to find out, um, okay, this, um, this version of Word, my current version of Word is, um, I probably need to know that. So um, usually that's in your about. Um, area and it, it's funny because I don't know how to find the version of my Microsoft Word. <laughs> okay, it's always on the help. And so this is Microsoft Office Professional Plus 2010. So let's say, um, let's go back to my Google search and I'm going to say insert an image in Microsoft Word 2010. Okay, and I search and Google's giving me a lot of. Um, issues here. In forums, you know, what we're looking at right now, you're going to find very specific issues. So while Microsoft might write a tutorial on how to insert images, well, what if something goes wrong? What if it's the wrong type or it's the wrong something and you get it errors? That's where these forums are going to come in. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on problem with inserting WF images in my, into Microsoft Word 2010. Okay. So forums are an example of things where these are real questions people have asked, okay? Where, so this person asked, his question is, or her question is, problem with inserting WF images into Microsoft Word 2010. And let's take a look at some of the answers that people gave. Okay, so these were answered by experts. I'm sorry, this is the question here. Okay, so the title of the question was the one I read above. This is the, the entire question. And then you'll notice that um, people start to answer this question. So this all replies, you'll notice that people have these replies. And then other people vote on these replies. So for example, if I click on this, I have to sign in to vote. But if somebody voted, um, then the best answer gets put up to the top of the list Okay, in this particular form. All right, but this is a person answering back on this question. So using forums is a great way to find somebody if you have a very specific question. Forums are a great way to find somebody with that specific question. Okay, so just to review, uh, we went through using uh, Windows help and support to find things uh, about Windows in general. And that was on the Windows button, help and support. We went through uh, using Google search to find items such as images. Okay, so we went through, oops, went through Google search. And then we also went through uh, micro, the help systems in actual, um, so went through Google search. And then we also went through the help systems in the programs themselves, such as Microsoft Word. Okay, and then we finished up on how to use, um, not Google image search, but regular Google search to search both for general help topics and also very specific forum posts on whatever question you might have. Okay, so I hope this I hope that this will help you be more resourceful.